A return trip to the moon is taking shape for the next generation of astronauts. Today, NASA announced the crew of Artemis II, the team that will go the furthest humans have ever traveled away from planet Earth. In tonight's Prime Focus, Gio Benitez has more on Artemis II and the series of missions that will one day help humanity chart a course for Mars and beyond. It's the historic and iconic challenge. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out. To reach for the stars. Of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. And it's set for liftoff once again. And liftoff of Artemis One. For the first time in more than 50 years, astronauts are heading back towards the moon aboard NASA's record-breaking Artemis II mission. You're answering questions that just really haven't been answered before. It's certainly a momentous occasion. I just got chills thinking about this. It's just so special uh, and such an exciting time to be part of the space program. To the moon and safely home again is the mission of Artemis II. NASA will be sending three Americans and one Canadian on a flyby mission around the moon. It's the farthest humans have ever traveled away from planet Earth. We will show what is possible when we dare to reach distant cosmic shores. It's all to test the path it's planning for establishing a human presence on the lunar surface. NASA saying these will be the four team members who will be on board. You are the right crew for this mission. Commander Reed Weissman, pilot Victor Glover, mission specialist Christina Cook, and Jeremy Hansen. What's going through your mind right now? I mean, you are going to the moon. Uh, that is awesome to hear you say. Each with a specific skill catered to the mission. Christina, who holds the record for longest single space flight by a woman, and Victor, a naval aviator who's flown 40 different aircrafts. What do you want to tell Americans, Victor? Because so many people have been watching you. I want to, uh, one, say that I hope that you have all the faith you should have in this crew. We're going to do our best to make you proud. And I uh, hope that this mission can continue to serve as inspiration to do great things. You know, the thing about records is that it's not about any one individual's success or contribution even. It's about the fact that it marks a milestone, a state of the art of where we're at and where we're choosing to go. To get there, NASA will be using its state-of-the-art Space Launch System, or SLS, the world's most powerful rocket, 36 stories high, and exceeds the mighty Saturn V of the Apollo program in many ways. We have a lot going on, but we need to stop and, and, and be in that moment and celebrate that success because the team that makes that possible, they've been working on this for years. The rocket proved its flight readiness during Artemis I late last year, completing its journey and after a few false starts, surpassed all expectations. We definitely pushed this vehicle far so that we can be now on to Artemis II. The spaceship will be refreshed with improvements after the previous mission, including upgrades to the mobile launcher and heat shield to reduce erosion on re-entry. The team in Mission Control will spend a number of months improving our products, figuring out what we could do better, figuring out what went well and we want to repeat. NASA is currently targeting November 2024 for the launch of the roughly 10-day long mission. Six, five, four stage engine start. Three, and when it's two, all systems go one. with the crew Boosters on board, there's no stopping what comes next. And liftoff of Artemis One. The rocket takes off, we eject the solid rocket boosters, the last, the launch abort system comes off Orion. The whole rocket is trying to get these two pieces into Earth orbit. So just one lap around the Earth, checking them both out. Our mission control will make sure everything's healthy. We're committed to the moon after only 90 minutes. Right after that, Orion is going to separate from the upper state, and Orion will continue on its way to the moon. The astronauts will confirm everything is ready for deep space travel, taking several days before approaching the moon. Here, the crew will position the spacecraft as close as 60 miles from the lunar surface, then go that record-breaking 40,000 miles beyond the moon. It marks a milestone, a state of the art of where we're at and where we're choosing to go. From there, it's a careful trek back to Earth. A gigantic heat shield protects the crew from re-entry temperatures of over 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit before parachutes deploy for a gentle touchdown off the coast of San Diego. What are you most excited about? Uh, I think we would say we're, we're so excited to take humanity with us. 
We would be lying if we didn't say we want to be 8,000 miles from the moon, look out the window, see the moon, and look back at all of us, every one of us on that planet, 7 billion people. It's going to be about the size of a golf ball out the window. Biggest for me is teamwork. The fact that we're not going to the moon alone, this is everyone's mission. I'm just so excited for you know all Americans and all Canadians to realize the, the truth, the fundamental truth, that we can do more when we work together. Splashdown. Oh, <laughs> yes. a, a safe splashdown. A safe splashdown. If all goes well on this launch, NASA will begin focusing on Artemis 3, which will land astronauts on the lunar surface once again in 2025, putting the first woman and person of color on the moon. NASA already revealing the new prototypes of space suits those Artemis 3 astronauts will wear on the lunar surface, and maybe one day Mars and beyond. None of the four of us were born when Gene Cernan and Jack Schmidt <clears throat> left the moon in 1972 as the last humans to ever step foot on it. And uh, it is awesome to be a part of this new generation, the Artemis generation. 61 years after that iconic JFK speech. For the eyes of the world, now look into space, to the moon and to the planets beyond. And we have vowed that we shall not see it governed by a hostile flag of conquest but by a banner of freedom and peace. A new hope about the promise and possibility of space to unite us once again. And as we leave the moon at Taurus Whistler, we leave as we came, and God willing, as we shall return, with peace and hope for all mankind. And now, more than 50 years later, we shall return and fulfill that promise. Gio Benitez joins us now from the Johnson Space Center in Houston. And Gio, the excitement is palpable there on the ground, I'm sure. Just tell us about how these astronauts feel about this mission and the overall notion of space having the power to unite us. Well, that's what they're so focused on, Lindsay, because they're looking at this, and when they get up to space, what they see is a small planet Earth. You know, here we see all these, you know, borders and, and divisions, right? But when they're in space, they are just seeing this one planet Earth, and that's how they see all of humanity. You know, I was, I was struck by something that Christina Cook said. She says, we're not doing this for us. We're doing this for all of us, as in all of humanity. Uh, and I was struck, by the way, by the, the students who were there watching them there. They were from an elementary school on, on an epic field trip, and they were basically just looking out so inspired by the people they were seeing on that stage. And so I think that this really is all about humanity, not just America. So inspirational for us all. Gio Benitez in Houston for us. Thanks so much, Gio. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.